Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install RetroArch on the retail mode of your Xbox. This means we will not need dev mode, we will not need to pay an activation fee. I'll be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So as mentioned at the start of the video, yes, this will be installing RetroArch completely in the retail mode of our Xbox. So it allows for a little bit more flexibility in the regard that you don't actually need dev mode. And it will allow you to launch RetroArch from your normal retail mode. So you still have access to all of your games as well, which is a nice feature. There is a couple things I will mention though. Since we are not in dev mode, there is more potential chance that Microsoft could lock down on this. That may mean that they may block accounts that are actually using this or they may ban consoles that are using this. I do find it unlikely, but it is a possibility. And with the latest updates to retail mode and how it's currently installed and set up, I feel it is in a better state right now that it's actually okay to use it. However, there is still a chance that this can happen. To be fully safe, I would recommend creating a new burner account for your Xbox. So don't use your main Xbox Live account, use a secondary account that you can install RetroArch on via that instead. So at least if they ban an account, it won't be your main account and you can still use it and access it via your main account. So you don't have to worry about it in that regard, but that's a little tip that can make this a little bit safer. But of course, use caution and just know that it is possible that something may go wrong in the future. And this is not for a sure 100% safe method, but I'm still going to be showing you how to set it up in today's video. So what we're going to be doing is coming to our Xbox. We're going to be clicking the Y button to search. And we're going to be searching for Edge. And with this, we're going to be opening up the Microsoft Edge browser, which shows up right here. And it should be installed by default as long as you're on the latest version of your Xbox. If this is your first time opening up, we simply just complete setup right here. Click confirm a few times to get rid of all this information. And just like that, it should all be gone away. From this point, we're going to be coming up to the URL bar here at the top. You can use your left stick to scroll around. We're going to be clicking the A button. Here, we're going to be clicking the X button to remove all this data. And we're going to be coming to this URL, HTTPS colon backslash backslash. And we're going to be typing in GAMR13 github.io once you have this fully typed in like this i will also leave this linked in the description down below so you can see exactly how it's written we're simply going to be clicking the start button on our xbox and we're going to be brought to this web page so from here there's a couple things you can install directly onto your xbox but for today's video we're going to be focusing on two things one is retroarch here on the top left and the second thing is going to be durango ftp so you can actually transfer and move files over so for the start of the video i'm simply going to be installing retroarch so we come here simply click download app here on the left click the a button you can feel free to enable this and always open up items automatically we then click open it should then open up our store and will be automatically brought to retroarch from this point we simply come here to the left we click get retroarch will be then added to our account and it should start to install automatically and you can feel free to view the install process right here from this point, we just need to wait for RetroArch to fully update, or if you have a store update, you might need to wait for that too. And we need to wait for this to be done. From this point, we can also feel free to come back to our webpage. We're then gonna be scrolling down until we see the Rango FTP. And from here, we're also gonna be coming to the bottom left of this. We're gonna be clicking on download app. Again, we're gonna be clicking the A button. And again, we should brought to the store page for Durango FTP. We're simply gonna be clicking the get button on this again, and it should be added to our account. And again, this should automatically start to download. And again, we can click check download progress to come here and review that. And now all we need to do is wait for RetroArch and Durango FTP to download and install. Now, maybe one thing to mention at this point, RetroArch is quite a big download at around 1.7 gigabytes because it has downloaded all the content and all of the assets. So this is something to keep in mind. If you do have a slow download, you might want to leave this for a longer time. Or if you're running on any download limits, this can be a good thing to keep in mind. Once RetroArch is downloaded, we're going to be opening it up for the first time. It should show up in your dashboard right here. Otherwise, you can simply click the Y button and search for it. And it will show up right here. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. So once RetroArch is open, it is going to look a little bit weird for the first time. We're going to be coming to the main menu. We're going to click one over to the right, and we're going to be looking for the online updater option. Click A to open this up. And here we're going to be downloading and installing most of these RetroArch asset files. So the first thing you want to do is come here to the update core info files. Simply click A to do this. It will take a couple of seconds and you see the information on the bottom left. Then we're going to be coming down one to update assets. Again, click A. After we update assets, RetroArch will look a lot different and it does look a lot better. We're then going to be coming down to update controller profiles. Again, click A to download and install this. We're then going to be coming down one and a couple of these last ones are optional. If you do plan to use cheats, you can update cheats right now. Again, simply click A to download and install these cheats. We're then going to be coming down one more and we're going to be updating the databases. Again, coming down one more, we're going to be updating the overlays. And again, we're going to be coming down one more and updating the slang shaders. Now these last two overlays and slang shaders are optional depending on if you're going to be using these or not. So you don't have to update them unless you plan to use them. Once all these are updated, we're going to be backing out of here by clicking B. 
We're then going to be coming over to the left. We're going to be coming to settings. We're going to be coming down to inputs. We're going to be scrolling down here until we see hotkeys. And then we're going to be looking for the menu toggle controller combo. And this is what we're going to be using when we're actually playing games to open up the menu. Simply click A to open this up. And here you can select this to whatever you want. Personally, I like to set this up as down and select, but feel free to select anything you'll remember. Next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be coming to settings, we're gonna be coming to video, we're gonna be coming to full screen mode, and I would simply make sure that full screen mode is enabled. By default in the latest version, it should be, but I always recommend coming here to check this first. From here, we're just gonna be backing out of here. We're gonna be coming up to the main menu. We're gonna be coming to configuration file, and we're gonna be saving the current config, which is gonna update all of our current changes into the latest configuration file for RetroArch. From this point, RetroArch is pretty much set up and ready to go. From this point, we're gonna be clicking our Xbox button. We're gonna be coming back to our home and now we're gonna be loading up Durango FTP. So from this point, once we open up Durango FTP, we will see a couple of different things. Sadly, with this version, we are limited to 30 gigabytes. As you can see on the right, we currently have 29.2 free on our storage. And that means we are limited to 30 gigabytes on the internal storage on our Xbox. Now, for most things, this won't be too much of an issue. It does mean you will be transferring games in and out frequently if you're going to be playing a lot of large PS2 or Wii games. But thankfully, we can do a lot with external storage, including loading and playing games from there. And there is some more advanced things I have seen, although I haven't looked into them much personally. And I will leave some more information about that linked in the description down below in case you want to check that out. From this point, we're going to be staying on the Rango FTP. We're going to be coming here to the bottom left to the start button right here. Simply click A on this, and now we're going to be starting our server. From this point, a couple things are going to show up on our screen. So in the middle here of the screen, we will see addresses of this device. And just below this, underneath our Xbox name, we will see an IP and some extra information here below. And we are actually going to be needing this to access the FTP and transfer files to the internal storage on our Xbox. So I am going to be blurring this out and hiding this, although you will need this to access these files a little bit later. Now, while we're on the topic of FTPs, it is possible to transfer files from basically any device, a PC, a Mac, or even a mobile device. Anything that you can actually install an FTP browser and locate to and transfer files will work without any issues on this. Now, from this point for the rest of the video, I'm going to be continuing on a Windows device, but as mentioned, it is possible on other devices. So I have seen that it is possible using the file browser in Windows. However, for me, it seemed to give me a lot of issues and for some reason would not work. So because of that, I'm actually going to be using a full dedicated FTP client. And if you are having issues as well, you can feel free to use this instead. So what I'm going to be using for today's video is FileZilla. I'll be leaving a download link in this in the description down below. It is going to be free to use, so you don't need to worry about that. We're going to be coming here to quick download links. We're going to be downloading the FileZilla client. It's going to automatically pick up that we're on Windows. Simply click download here. It'll then give us this pop up and we're going to be using the free version. The first one here on the left, simply click download and then our download will begin. From this point, you simply need to locate your downloaded exe file. I have mine on my desktop right here. Double click to install it. Click yes on the pop up. Once this pop up comes up, we're going to be clicking I agree. Here's where they do add a bit of bloatware to this. We're simply going to be declining this unless you actually want this, but most people will not simply click decline, click next. You can choose if you want to install it on the whole computer or just for you. For me, I'm just going to be choosing just for me. Once you have this selected, click next. You can now feel free to enable and check on any of these options as well. Simply click next again and then choose your install location. Once you're happy, click next and finally click install. We can leave start files and now checked, click finish and then FileZilla is gonna open up. From this point in the host section, we're simply gonna be entering the URL that was showed up on our Xbox underneath the addresses on this device. We're then gonna be looking for the port. Once this is entered, we're gonna be coming to the port and the port should be set up automatically in Durango FTP as 21. So unless you changed it, this should work. And from this point, we're simply gonna be clicking quick connect, click okay, and then we should be connected to our Xbox. So how FileZilla works here on the left, we have our computer. And on the right, we have the file location that we're connecting to, which is our Xbox. So here we can see all of our Xbox folders. From this point, once we're fully connected, we're gonna be coming to our local state folder right here. And here we're gonna be looking for our RetroArch folder. So for me, it is the second folder here. It will mention RetroArch in the title. All we need to do is come to this and we double click to come in here. And inside here, we're then gonna be coming to our local state folder. And here is where we can put and contain all of our RetroArch assets. So all of our different details are in here. 
And here's our system folder, so you can put any of your BIOS files in here as usual. Now, from this point, I will mention I do have specific videos showing the dev mode version of RetroArch for all the different consoles and cores that exist. So I go into detail on where to put all of the different files. And for this, it's mostly the same doing it with the retail version. Only to transfer files and assets over, we need to do it via this method. There's also been some extra improvements involving the external hard drive. Now you will have less issues when trying to load up larger games. Loading from an external drive is now much more consistent and it's much more usable overall in comparison to the older version. So all these are really, really good improvements. Now I will say, as mentioned, most of the process will be exactly the same. Although if you would like to see dedicated retail mode videos of the different cores and the different consoles, or at least for the main few, let me know in the comments down below, I could get around to them. These could be, for example, Wii, GameCube, some of the most popular systems that are on RetroArch at the moment, just to get the process and the full system layout if you want. Or if there's other specific things, including the file browser or the FTP client, if you would like to have more details in that regard, be sure to let me know as well. I'll be sure to get around to anything else that I can. Anyway guys, I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Sean Daly, Joshua Davis and Devante Hunt. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel, I really appreciate it. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button or any video on the channel, it would really help me out. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to install RetroArch on your retail mode on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. Hopefully you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. Until next time guys, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.